tell me what's bothering you, Shook. I just... I just feel so useless. So... So powerless. Everybody goes through that. But I can't stop eating. Every day I try and try. And every day I go off. I hate candy bars all over the house. What a candy bar ain't gonna hurt you, none. One, no, but 10 or 11. I can't even look at my own vagina. Well, now, honey, I can't help you on that one. I wish I had the courage to just get it over with and get really fat. Oh, Miss Threadgood, I just... I'm too young to be old, and I'm too old to be young. Maybe I'm just going crazy. You getting hot flashes. Sometimes you get the sweats and your heart starts to pound it. How did you know? Simple, honey. You're going through the change. <laughs> Welcome to Bay Area Psychology. Culturally, menopause has been a source of humor and depression for women, a signal of diminishing power and sexuality. For in our youth worshiping culture, the aging of women, more so than men, is often met with decreasing status. In Understanding Menopause, Janine O'Leary Cobb states that menopause is a transitional period marking the closure of reproductive life, a quote, time of life rather than a point in time. For many women, the sensation, sorry, cessation of their menstrual cycle indicates freedom. In addition to freedom from pregnancy, women begin to come into their own and reclaim a voice that has been subdued for too long beneath the needs of children, parents, and employers. Tonight, we will look closely at what menopause really means to women. We are fortunate to have with us Lana Rappa, a talented Campbell chiropractor, and Norma Jean Hinders, a marriage and family counselor and author of Seasons of a Woman's Life. Ladies, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. I would guess in your work that um, the character in Fried Green, Green Tomatoes, uh, played by Kathy Bates, her reaction to considering that perhaps this is the change must not be all that unfamiliar to you. I'm sure that you have encountered women who um, begin to notice changes in their bodies and have feelings about that. Yes, I've definitely seen patients in my practice and, and once they know that they can, they can do something about it, they have some power over their bodies, they, they don't feel quite so weepy as, okay. as she did in the movie. So part of your experience is what creates that feeling is the sense of powerlessness, like what's happening to me, I don't right. understand it. Such a change that you, yeah, you can't control, but, but you can. Okay. Okay. How about you? Uh, it's similarly, often it comes in in sexual disorders with, with family and, and she's not interested anymore and, or it's hurting or there's some change, biological changes and it's blown out of proportion so far thinking this will be forever. And okay. I think it's that this is forever that really brings discouragement and depression. Uh, much more so than just the natural change that okay. occurs. So it's that not having a time frame for it. Right, not having an understanding. Oh, this is normal. This is, this is passing. Okay. And part of that, I'm sure, has to do with, you know, how many women we have around us who might be going through the same thing at the same time. I mean, part of, I know, the, the distress for this character is she didn't have any friends her age who were having the same experience. And so you really, I'm sure, do feel um, kind of isolated or odd. One of the things I found is that many, because women go through it at various times, that a woman in her late 30s or early 40s might be going through symptoms that her friends have not encountered yet. Okay. And so she feels out of sync and out of, out of cycle, so to speak. Sort of like the nine-year-old who started her period earlier right. than her friends who started at 13 or, or 12. And so it's that out of sync time that creates probably the most distress. Well, that's a very good point. Um, I have prepared some graphics on some of the psychological changes that I'm sure you both have seen uh, clients go through. Let's take a look at the first uh, set that we have. Now, this is uh, from Understanding Menopause by Janine O'Leary Cobb. And one of the first characteristics she talks about is memory lapses. Last year, I could go to the supermarket and remember 10 items without a list. This year, I walk upstairs to get one thing and forget why I went upstairs. 
And next is anxiety, worry over choices that were routine or having a sense of a free floating anxiety, the sense that something might be different or wrong and, I, and I'm not sure what it is. Have, uh, have you had any reports by your clients over changes like that? Um, yeah, I have one particular woman that was going through very similar things right now. She would come in just feeling just all out of sorts and dizzy and, and just really not herself. And okay. that's one thing I did find was very help, helpful to her or the uh, chiropractic care she was undergoing. And also what she did to empower herself, and she's really going through it well now, is to research it. What I think women can do, the best thing that they can do for themselves is to, to look up the books. There's so many wonderful sources in the, the libraries. In fact, when I was researching further to come on this show, I found um, five, six, seven great books right in our local libraries, in the Campbell Library and the, um, in the Willow Glen Library that okay. were great sources on what you can do and how you can take over and help yourself to um, go through this transition much better. So again, that, and, and I imagine, that, and in fact I know that the memory losses and memory lapse and things like that are a temporary state. I mean, I'm sure, you know, I've had women say to me, I feel like I'm losing my mind, you know, what's happening for me. Can you tell us, Norma Jean, a little bit about your book, Seasons of a Woman's Life? Oh, thank you. Um, one of the things that we have, and I think in our culture, have discovered that much of the research has been done on men, both psychologically as well as biologically. Right. And much of the more recent research on women's adult life development is recognizing that women's lives go in continual change. Okay. There are many beginnings, many endings. We are empathic and relational. And so when something goes wrong with a friend or a family member, we are caught in their, their stuff, their okay. life cycle transitions. Okay. And, life, and then that affects us. And so the book takes sets the metaphor seasons and talks about the tasks that women go through that are cyclical in nature. Okay and that we may go through many seasons in our lives. Okay. But the main thing, and I find this true in menopause primarily, or any of the major transitions biologically in our lives, what we have not experienced, um, if we haven't grieved, the losses of the past, if we haven't really taken time to look at those winter seasons, as I call them, okay. that menopause or any of those other life changes, maternity, having babies, um, whatever marriage, are much more profound and okay. much more traumatic sometimes because it's tapping into previous losses. And menopause is a sense, it's also beginning, but we also have to say goodbye to the old. And so the book talks a lot about how to go through change. Okay, and so, so part of that is framing uh, this time in a woman's life around the fact that this is a transition to yes. something else. And from, and, from and to be able to say goodbye to something. And, and, I, an and I'm sure, I'm sorry to interrupt you, no, I'm sure please. that the physical changes that women have to, to say goodbye to, I mean, maybe the reality is um, at that point that they're not going to have the same physical strength or the same, uh, um, same reactions to foods they right. eat, things like that that maybe they used to. Kind of the way I look at it is you really just can't cheat on your health anymore. You really need to look over your overall health and, and round it out and take care of all aspects. I kind of look at it as the five vital components to good health. You need to really look at your nutrition. You can't get away with eating uh, you know, things that we all know we shouldn't anymore, the sugars and the fats and, and the salt and all of those really deplete your body. They're big stresses on your body and the hormonal change itself is a stress on your body you're, that you're trying to go through. So you need to really watch that and as we've all heard you, you have to get enough calcium in your system. Uh, the, the decreasing estrogen does change the amount of, of calcium your bones will absorb and therefore decreasing the strength of the bone. So you are at a little loss. Before menopause, the estrogen has a protective factor. So you do need to look at it and you need to exercise more. Uh, you can't get away with being sanitary anymore or you are going to end up with osteoporosis. Um, so you, if you deal with it naturally, you can get away with having to, to uh, stay on hormone replacement therapy or, any, or even go on it at all. I personally view menopause as a natural part of life and that we're supposed to naturally go through that transition. Mm -hmm. So I have a hard time seeing that you have to live on, on uh, hormones all the time to deal with these physical changes. But you have to work at it. You have to also watch your stress level. Um, you also have to make sure you get enough rest and you also have to balance your nervous system which is the aspect I take care of through chiropractic care. Okay, so that's interesting in the sense that maybe in some ways taking, doing hormonal therapies is a way to not have to address 
the lifestyle changes that we're talking about. You know, I mean, it occurs to me that, well, if I can take something, then I can continue to live as I always have. And uh, so having to acknowledge, you know, I'm really going to be at a different place in my body. Um, I'm sure it does have a reaction. Let's take a look at a couple more of the psychological aspects that we may be facing. Irritability. When we get angry about things that never bothered us before, we're more conscious of aging, of the time we have left, and we become impatient at annoying behaviors. Also, panic attacks, sudden unbearable sense of doom. In terms of this irritability, I mean, this is, a, this is something that I think a lot of times will bring women into uh, uh, therapy in my clinical experience, which is they'll say, you know, I'm snapping at everybody, you know, I just, I can't. You know, every time my children walk in the room, I just find them so annoying, you know, and, <laughs> and that sense that I'm a bad person or, or what's wrong with me. Have you experienced that? Norma? Absolutely, and I think women often internalize if something is going wrong, it must be my fault. Something must be wrong with me. And yes, there is something changing in us, but it's not necessarily wrong. Okay. And uh, it's, again, it's na normalizing it, saying this is a natural process in our lives. And, Recognizing it ushers us into a, maybe a, a wiser time in our lives. But you know, that's a, that's a wonderful way to put that, that maybe part of that irritability is we've reached a level of wisdom that we are able to sort out what's truly an urgent crisis right. and what's, you know, versus what isn't. So we do become impatient mm -hmm. when we're bothered with the small things in life mm -hmm. that maybe used to get our attention. And, mm -hmm. and now we're like, you know, it just doesn't seem to be a priority. Mm -hmm. It might push you into actually turning inward more. In our childbearing years, we are sort of, we take care of everybody. We take care of the children. You take care of the husband. You take care of everybody. And I think maybe you need that little spur, a little extra irritation to make a change internally and turn right. more internal for, mm -hmm. to ourselves to take care of ourselves more now in this era. Yeah, sort of like, well, that is one of the advantages of anger is it does create distance. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, that you bring an important, important mm -hmm. point that, yes, you know, maybe then I can have some time to process the fact that something's very different with me. We're going to take a short break.